Hello everyone, Jacobo here and I welcome you to a new series on the channel, the Yu-Gi-Oh! Concept Deck. It's targeted towards newer players, at the least I hope I'm doing it right. <laughs> the idea is quite simple, I'll try to explain various concepts in practice, one step at a time. I'm not sure how this is going to work out, but I still hope it's going to help people familiarize themselves with the game and can be used as a resource for everyone starting their adventure in the world of Yu-Gi-Oh! Before we start though, remember to like, comment and subscribe if you think this is interesting. I'm on a road to a thousand subs with a special event planned for that occasion. Therefore, the faster we hit that milestone, the quicker I'll spill the beans. Now back to the pilot episode. With the intro out of the way, let's talk about the topic of today's video, Chain Links. And oh boy, that's a doozy. What even is a chain in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh? A chain is a way to order the resolution of multiple card effects activated at once, or when a player wants to use an effect after a card has been played, but before it has affected the game state. The biggest question is, how the hell it even happens in the first place? Well, the explanation of chain and chain links is meaningless while talking about spell speed first. I told you it was gonna be a doozy. In the most basic sense, spell speed shows how fast a card effect is. There are three levels of spell speed in the game. One, two, and three. With one being the slowest and three being the fastest. I think a car analogy will work fine here, especially for the people in the US where there are more cars than the actual people. Spell speed 1 effects are like, um, let's say a Volkswagen Beetle. Very slow but reliable. Spell speed 2 effects are like your regular sports car, very fast and awesome. And spell speed 3 effects are like F1 cars, they go very very fast. Why am I using such an analogy? Besides making it easier for the folks in the US, hi guys, is because a slow effect cannot be activated in response to a faster one. So a spell speed 1 effect cannot be activated in response to spell speed 2 or spell speed 3. Just like a Volkswagen Beetle won't be able to overtake a sports car or an F1 car. You get the idea. However, the effects with the same spell speed, except for spell speed 1, can be activated in response to effects with the same spell speed. Okay, so I've talked a bit about spell speed and more about cards, but, but how do you determine a spell speed on a card? What is the spell speed of the effect? It's very simple really. Starting from the top, spell speed 3 effects are solely reserved for counter traps, nothing else. Spell speed 2 is for quick play spells, continuous traps, normal traps, and monster effects that mention quick effect, or during player's turn, or something like that. Everything else is spell speed 1. Simple, right? Now let's talk about how a chain is made. So when a card or effect is activated, an effect with the same or higher level spell speed can be chained, like I mentioned previously. The only exception, of course, is spell speed 1 effect. Every effect in the chain is called a chain link, and those chain links are numbered from 1 upwards, showcasing the order in which the chain was built. Chain link 1 is going to be the first effect, chain link 2 is going to be the effect right after it, chain link 3 is the next one, etc, etc. That's how the link is made. But how do you resolve a chain? You do the same thing, but backwards. So you first resolve the last effect activated, then the previous one, and all the way back to chain link 1, which resolves last. With all the theory out of the way, here's the main reason this video was made. You see, in this series I wanted to showcase a deck that, in my opinion, can help players learn various things in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! by just doing it. You can gain the basic understanding by reading the rulebook, but learning by doing might be more help. Today's deck isn't going to make you popular at your locals, but you'll definitely gain a good understanding on what chains are and how to use them. Here's a sample of a chain burn deck. All the spell cards, with the exception of chain strike, focus on drawing or adding cards to the hand, while the trap lineup is mostly made of the cards that deal effect damage. The monsters also help gaining access to the cards as quickly as possible. Why do I think this deck is a good choice for learning how chain links work? That's actually due to two very specific reasons. For one, the entire game plan of the deck is to deal damage with burn trap cards, most of the time, creating rather long chains. This helps player understand how chains are made and how to resolve them. Additionally, playing chain burn also teaches players how to sequence the effects in order to maximize the damage. Those two things are important, but not only when it comes to playing this deck, but also any other. And 
That's because once you master the concept of sequencing your effects, you gain the ability to chain block your effects. You might wonder what it is. The idea behind it is very simple. Since your opponent can only respond to the effect activated last, you can sequence your effects in a way that will prevent any possible disruption. That's why learning chains and chain links is very important. That's it for the pilot episode. I think this might be a bit useful for newer players and that there might be some things that I forgot about or didn't think about. So I'm awaiting those being pointed out in the comments. I also want to hear from you guys how this concept, pun intended, can be polished. And with that, I'll see you all tomorrow on stream. Joko signing out. Peace.